Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to my channel, Data Driven Decisions. And this is day five of this um, personal finance uh, revamp project that I'm, I've built for myself and I've just been recording uh, day after day, just the progress. Um, you know, I got it up and running now. It's, it, it looks good. It's all in Power BI and I'll, I'll show that to you. Um, you know, the big problem was um, I was using Mint all along to as my uh, finance tool. Um, and what, what I would do is I would uh, define every transaction, make sure it's in the right spend category, and I would export that transaction history table as a CSV, bring it into BigQuery, uh, do some manipulation, do some um, reshaping, and then, um, and then view that in Power BI. Um, but now Mint is gone, as you know, into it, got rid of Mint replaced everybody with Credit Karma, and Credit Karma is a joke. It doesn't even have a, a web browser tool for managing money. It only works on your phone. Um, you know, you certainly can't export a CSV file out of it. So, uh, you know, luckily, personal capital um, is really close to the same thing as Mint, and I was using that as well. I was just using it for the investment side. I wasn't, uh, you know, categorizing my transactions uh, like I was in Mint. But now I am doing that. So, um, you know, I lost my history uh, for Mint uh, at January 31st of 2024. So I had to um, go into personal capital and define every transaction from February 1st up to the current date. And then uh, now I have two transaction tables, a Mint table and a personal capital. And uh, I had to stack them together to turn that into one transaction table. Now, the big difficulty, a lot of the work, which was done in BigQuery, was uh, reshaping that personal capital table so that it's the exact uh, same schema as the mint table. You know, making sure all the, the columns are in the same order of the same format of the same name, and then um, making sure every attribute value class across every of uh, the two sources are the same. So, you know, um, for, you know, a credit card name has a different name in both the mint and personal capital, but I had to give each one uh, a new name that is the same across both tables so that when we aggregate the data across months, uh, those will bucket into the same category and, and be seen in, together, which is exactly what we want. You know, the big difficulty is when you, when you merge two transaction tables, you don't uh, uh, revamp the, the attribute values. You leave them alone and then all of a sudden, it just, the data doesn't sing because when you aggregate the data across the two sources, uh, two of the same thing are coming up in different buckets. Um, you just have to do um, some remapping of, of the attribute values. Um, so, you know, the first part of the work, which was really heavy, was the, the categorization in personal capital. Um, I'll show you that to you right now. Okay, so this is my personal capital. This is the front page. Um, you know, this is a great tool. I really gotten uh, used to it now, uh, now that I've been working with it for the past couple weeks. This is the front page. Um, right off the bat, it shows your net worth in the top. Mine is at 161. Uh, this is my net worth over time. Um, uh, definitely been a lot of changes just from account, account from money moving across accounts that causes spikes like this. Um, it has a budgeting and cash flow. Those are the real two categories that I use. And, um, you know, like, let's just go over to cash flow. Uh, for this month, uh, this is my cash flow. I'm negative uh, 5,900, so 6,000. Uh, what, what is cash flow? Cash flow is your, your income minus your expenses. So if we go to our income, uh, this is month over month income by day, showing that you know, I get paid on the 15th and the 30th every month. And uh, here's the expenses, um, month over month expenses. Uh, it's been an expensive month, but not as bad as last month. Here are all my spend categories. And uh, down below are all the transactions that I have to map. Um, so, yeah, this is a great tool. You know, the other tool is uh, budgeting. This is the budgeting tool showing your goal right here and your actual, here's all your spend categories. And then this is your spending by day. Um, and these are all your transactions. 
the real work that I had to do was go to the transaction table and from um, current date all the way to February 1st, I had to go into every transaction and categorize it correctly. And, um, you know, I was using the budgeting tool to ensure that I was um, calculating or categorizing correctly. But, uh, you know, I feel good about it. Um, so, you know, I had to go through a couple thousand lines of transactions and just make sure everything is uh, in the right category. So that's the work in, in personal capital. The next piece of the work uh, was in BigQuery. I had to, um, you know, build a new personal capital table and, and uh, manipulate it to get it to look like what it was in Mint. I had to stack it. Here is the main uh, personal finance BigQuery. It's, it does have a lot of code. It's got about seven lines of code. Um, and in here, you know, I just do a lot of shaping, uh, manipulating. I turn, um, I normalize the data. I turn, you know, one table into a, a data model I, with DIN tables and fact tables. Um, you know, I turn long tables into columnar tables and vice versa. I have some analysis tables just, you know, to build the cash flow chart. Um, just all sorts of things just go into BigQuery. I'm a real huge proponent of front loading all processing in the database. So that's exactly what I'm doing right here. This is all work that maybe could be done in Power Query or in Power BI, but it's just so much easier to work in Power BI when you do all the work in the database because all you're working with just is flat tables and there's no order of the tables in Power BI when one is built off the other. That can be a problem you create. Uh, but you know, when every table is built in in BigQuery, then they're all, you know, of the same, uh, they're first order tables and they all can be manipulated and nothing's connected to each other in Power BI. And that's what you want. You want everything just to be uh, first order tables. So yeah, a lot of the work just was coding in BigQuery. Um, I have two, uh, this is the budget table uh, where I take, um, this is my budget uh, sheet in in power in Excel, and I take it into into BigQuery and I um, I shape it into uh, a normal t looking table, a transactional table. I'll show you what it looks like at the end. Um, it's a very long table, so instead of there being um, a column for every single goal and month like it is here it's now just a normal transaction table with year and month as as fields so it's it's just a long table now and that makes it so much easier to work with in power bi um here's the final product right now in power bi um you know just focusing on monthly budget we're looking at february um, this is my budget dashboard this is what takes that you know big query table which is the same table it was in Excel, just a different shape. And it gets me to really produce a wide load of graphics um, just because the data is in the right shape. Um, you know, with this, with this dashboard, it all starts off with these KPIs. On the top row, you see the actuals of my uh, net take home, my total spend, my cash flow, my net worth, and my investment return. And then uh, the the second is the goal, uh, you know, at the beginning of every month, what is, what, what's planned. And then um, the bottom is the difference, the difference between those two. So um, I made $400 more than I planned. Um, I spent three thirty five hundred more than I planned. Uh, my cash flow was negative 3000. Um, my net worth, um, change was way up to one one thousand six hundred despite the heavy spending and uh, my investment return was three thousand so that's why my net worth went up um you know my my money is broken down into these five buckets and uh, there's the goal and the actual of all those and then here's uh, a cumulative difference of that starting with cash up 600 total savings up another 300 Credit card down 4,000, total retirement up 2,700, and then equity up 4,500 to a total change of 4,000. So that's really cool. 
Um, here's the spend categories, actual versus goal. So um, where did I spend more money on dog, on health, on clothes, on groceries? And then here's the cumulative difference of that. So all the spend uh, actual versus goal summed up to equal negative 3,500 or 3,500 in spend. For the month of February, this is just a breakdown of everything, goal versus actual, starting with all my accounts, you know, what, what I plan to have in it at the end versus what I actually had it at the end. And then here's some account summaries like total cash, total savings, total credit card, all that. And then here's all my spend categories, goal versus actual, spending total. And then uh, here's some final summary stuff. Um, here's some uh, categories I got to. Um, oh, here's the, it's its own bucket called spend categories where it's just summaries. And so, yeah, this is a, a nice table. And over to the right, uh, here's the goal versus actual in the top KPI, similar to what you saw in the top of uh, the chart right here. Uh, you know, here's just in a bar graph showing what changed. Um, some pie charts of um, my spend and then the money to move. You know, this was the goal to have 13% of my money be in cash flowed, but turns out none of it was. I was in the negative. Um, here's uh, the balance by cash account group. So here's all my cash accounts, some difference. Um, this is a uh, savings account group. This is credit cards. Here's my retirement. Here's my house. Um, well, here's the um, the pay part. Um, this is actual versus goal by by month. Um, of uh, of money to move. I can change this. I do dog. There's actual versus goal of dog. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, here's just the monthly budget dashboard. There's, there's many more that I can show later, but uh, I just wanted to walk you through one of these dashboards. I'm happy to have everything up and running. Um, there's a lot of work I still need, want to do in Power BI to really make these, um, you know, grade A with uh, quality. But uh, I really appreciate you listening. Stay tuned for more work and uh, have a good day.